So, so, so David Lewis Williams pr proposes and supports with evidence the, the, the notion that the cave artists were shamans very much as shamans in, in hunter-gatherer societies today are, that they were deliberately inducing altered states of consciousness, entering what they experienced as the spirit world, and documenting those experiences on, on cave walls. Now, the evidence for this is really, is really extremely compelling. There are certain, as, as well as these distinctive supernatural beings, typically part animal and part human in form, the therianthropes, there are certain specific patterns which appear all over the world. Zigzag lines, internested curved lines, starbursts, dots, grids, uh, grid patterns. All, all over the cave of Lascaux, for example, you'll find two ibexes facing each other with a, a square grid in between them with parallel and vertical li lines drawn in. You find exactly the same device uh, on the walls of rock shelters in, in South Africa. Not only are these two cultures distant geographically, they're also distant in, distant in time. The, the, the painting from South Africa may be, may be only 2,000 years old. The painting in Lascaux is 17,000 years old, but the imagery is identical. The, the, these very distinctive patterns and the very distinctive supernatural beings that are painted. Uh, you can get exactly the same experiences reported by modern volunteers in lab work using hallucinogens. And, and we have a name for these patterns. They're called entoptic phenomena or, or phosphenes. And there's really charts of the most common ones. And you can take one of those charts from modern volunteers, go into a cave, and you're going to find exactly the same patterns. So it's really not, once you've, once you've done that work and, and, and compared the imagery, uh, it's really not difficult to accept that this is, it must have been, what the ancient artists were doing, that they were experiencing altered states of consciousness. Now, David Lewis Williams himself does not, does not suggest what the agency was that was introducing the altered state of consciousness. And we know that there are many ways to do that. It could have been done, it could have been done through dancing. It still is by the Kalahari Bushmen in, in Southern Africa. They do a, a trance dance where they dance 12 hours at a, at a session round and round in a circle around a fire until, until they start to sweat and, 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 and shake and, and eventually fall, fall to the ground and experience their, their spirits leaving their, their, their bodies and traveling in the spirit world. Uh, exactly the same kind of experiences are induced with uh, ayahuasca in the Amazon by, by, by shamans. Um, again, they experience travel to what they call the spirit world. They encounter beings there who teach them. Does somebody in the village uh, need a remedy for a particular ailment? The spirits will tell the shaman which plants to put together uh, to, to, to provide that remedy. Uh, and so I, th I think this is a very reasonable and very fruitful explanation uh, for the cave art, that it is mankind's earliest documentation of contact with supernatural realms and beings. Uh, contact which requires the individual concerned to be in an altered state of consciousness in, in order to have it. And then you have to, then, then really I began to think, if this is the case, and we, and we also find that it is connected to a, to a huge leap forward in every other aspect of, of, of human behavior, then maybe, maybe it's possible that, that instead of being demonic and dangerous and harmful to human beings, as we're taught today overwhelmingly in our society, perhaps experiences in altered states of consciousness are in fact nurturing and, and positive. And it may even be that, that we owe our very humanity uh, to, those, to those experiences. And I think that's the importance of the, of, of the cave art and the new analysis of cave art, that it, that it, that it is sooner or later going to force us to, to reconsider our attitudes to, to almost everything. It, it might not be too far-fetched to say that, that in the society that we live in today, which is so negative about such experiences, we, by accepting that negativity, we may be denying ourselves the next step forward in our own evolution. So important issues are, are, are raised by this. And um, I began it really with a question about the mystery of human origins. It led me to altered states of consciousness. And then, because my own background is in, is in journalism, and I feel, it's, I feel it's important to experience what I'm writing about, I had to have those experiences myself as well.